Let's go! Chapter 6, lesson number 2, finding the sum of a series using our good old friend, hello, partial fractions. Yeah. So, very quick recap. What is the difference between a sequence and a series? Katie, help us out. Give us an example of a sequence. Brilliant. Two, four, six, eight. Just a list of numbers in a definite order. What about a series, though? Shannon, help us out. Perfect. A series is just the sum of the terms in a sequence. Yeah. So, let's move on then and use partial fractions to find the sum of a certain series. Let's look at this example, number one. First of all, part A express 1 over 4k squared take away 1 in partial fractions. Part B to just that, the sum of 1 over 4k squared take away 1 going from k equals 1 all the way up to n is equal to a half take away 1 over 2 bracket 2n plus 1. And part C, evaluate the sum of 1 over 4k squared take away 1 going from k equals 1 all the way up to bum 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 infinity and beyond. So, part A express 1 over 4k squared take away 1 in partial fractions. This came into unit 1, part 1, chapter 1, first lesson. How do you do it? Brilliant. The first thing you have to do is you have to factorise the denominator. So, factorising that, Jack, what do you get? Good. 2k plus 1, 2k minus 1. You can see from this then, the denominator contains what is known as distinct linear factors. So, there's 1 over 4k squared take away 1. Because there are distinct linear factors, we can write that as 2k plus 1 bracket 2k minus 1. Which means when we write it in partial fractions, we will have a over 2k plus 1 plus b over 2k minus 1. If you get it back to front, it makes no difference. We need to have 4k squared take away 1, or in other words, 2k plus 1, 2k minus 1 as the denominator, but a is just over 2k plus 1. We're also needing to bring in that 2k minus 1. So, we have to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2k minus 1. B is over 2k minus 1, but we're also needing that 2k plus 1. So, once again, we multiply the numerator and denominator by 2k plus 1. We can see from that then the denominators are the same. We have this 4k squared take 1. If we multiply these out, that is also what we would have. The right hand side, let's simplify that, bring them together so you get one fraction. So uh, you have a bracket 2k take 1 plus b bracket 2k plus 1. The left hand side is equal to the right, the denominators are the same, this is just factor factorised here, so we can cancel the denominators. Boom, 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 boom. That will leave us with 1 equals a bracket 2k minus 1 plus b bracket 2k plus 1. We have to find these values for a and b though, so what do we do, Harley? Brilliant. What you then do is you set different k to be different values. Choose different values that will allow you to eliminate either a or b. For example, if k was equal to 1 half, 2 times a half is 1, take away 1 is 0, so that would give you 0 a. So you're eliminating a, allowing you to find b. If k was equal to a half then, 0 0.5, you'd have 1 equals 0 a, and that would be 2 times a half plus 1, which is 2 times b is 2b. Therefore, 2b is equal to 1, meaning b is equal to 1 half. What other value would you choose for k, Charlie? Good. If k was equal to negative 1 half. Well, if it's negative 1 half, multiply that by 2 and add 1, you would get 0. So that's going to give you 0b. So we're going to eliminate b. That will leave us with 1 equals. That works out as negative 2a plus 0b. Therefore, Negative 2a is equal to 1, so 2a is equal to negative 1, meaning a is equal to negative 1 half. 1 over 4k squared take away 1, when we split that up into partial fractions, we had a over 2k plus 1, or well, we can replace a with negative 1 half, and we had b over 2k minus 1. We can replace b then with 1 half. We don't write it as that though, looks a bit daft when I've got a fraction within a fraction. All you do is you move the denominator down to the very bottom line and that will give you negative 1 over 2 bracket 2k plus 1. Plus 1 over, move this 2 down as well, so you'd have 2 bracket 2k take away 1. 
A lot of the time people do not like starting with a negative, so you may wish to rewrite this, put the positive fraction first, and then change that to take away 1 over 2 bracket 2k plus 1. And that there will be your answer. Part B to just that, the sum of 1 over 4k squared, take away 1, going from k equals 1 all the way up to n is equal to a half, take away 1 over 2 bracket 2n plus 1. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing that you probably notice is if you're wanting the sum going from k equals 1 all the way up to n of this fraction here, well, this fraction is the exact same one that we just wrote in partial fractions. So let's write it in partial fractions. So we're still keeping the sum of k equals 1 all the way up to n, but what we're doing is we're rewriting the 1 over 4k squared take away 1 with our answer when it's split into its partial fractions. What do we then do? Well, we've got no choice but sub in the values of k. So we're starting with k equals 1, and if you sub in k equals 1 into both fractions, well, that'll give you 1 over 2 times, and if you replace k with 1, that works out to be 1. We are then taking away, and if you you're again replace k with 1, you'd have 1 over 2 times 2 times 1 plus 1, which is take away 1 over 2 times 3, and that's when k equals 1. Keep going, replace k with 2, so if k equals 2, you'd have 1 over 2 times 2 times 2. Take away 1, which is the same as 1 over 2 times 3. We are taking it away, if we replace k with 2, that will give us 2 times 2, which is 4, add 1 is 5, so it's 1 over 2 times 5, and that was all when k was equal to 2. We would then sub in k equals 3, and when k equals 3, we'd have 2 times 3, take away 1, which is 5, so it's 1 over 2 times 5. Five. We are taking away 1 over 2 times 2 times 3 plus 1, which gives you 1 over 2 times 7. Can you see what's happening yet? One or two people saying yes. Really, what you do is you would keep on going with that. And you would keep going down until you reach k equals n. If you do that, well, then you'll have 1 over 2 times 2 times n take away 1. And then you're taking away 1 over 2 times 2 times n plus 1. And that was when k was equal to n. What can you do though with this? One or two people noticing? Good. Help us out. What would you do, Said? Perfect. You are taking away 1 over 2 times 3, and then you're immediately adding on 1 over 2 times 3. So really, they will cancel out. This fraction here that we are subtracting immediately in the next row, we are adding it once again. So again, they will cancel out. We are taking away this 1 over 2 times 7, but we know the next row, if we wrote that in that fraction, we'd be adding that back on. So we know they would also cancel out. With this one here in the bottom row, when we're adding that on, well, we know just before that, what we would have done is we would have subtracted that. So that would also have cancelled out. You can see that when you're subbing in k equals 1, the last fraction just cancels with the fraction that's first on the next line. So this fraction that's last will cancel with the one that's first. This one that's last will cancel with the one that's first. The fraction that's last here will cancel with the one that is first. So what we're left with then is we're left with this 1 over 2 times 1. And we're left with this takeaway 1 over 2 bracket 2n plus 1. So really our answer then is just going to be a half takeaway 1 over 2 bracket 2n plus 1 because all these fractions will cancel, and that is what we will be left with. Part C, evaluate 1 over 4k squared take away 1, going from this time, k equals 1 all the way up to infinity! Bum, bum, bum! Really, what we're doing then with this you have to try and think about it a different way. We know how to evaluate this going from k equals 1 all the way up to n. But that's not what we're asked for here. We're asked to evaluate it going up to infinity. So we need to think, right, well, what happens as n approaches infinity? In other words, what is the limit as n tends towards infinity? Well, for this, what we're thinking is the sum of 1 over 4k squared take away 1 going from k equals 1 all the way up to n, well, we know from part b that that is just equal to 
this half take away one over two bracket two n plus one. So we need to think about what happens with that as n tends towards infinity. So all we're doing is we're replacing this part here with our answer for part b. And that there was the answer for part b. We're now thinking though about limit as n tends towards infinity. So as n tends towards infinity, well this half is not going to change. That will just stay as one half. Woo! However, this fraction here, we are going to have one over two bracket, two n plus one, but n is going to be replaced with a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger number. So what happens as you replace n with a bigger number? Well, you're going to have one divided by a bigger number. And what happens if you think about one over two and then one over three, one over four, as the number at the bottom increases, the fraction gets smaller. And what will happen is, as this number gets humongous, it's really going to have b1 divided by a humongous number, which will mean it's going to tend towards zero. So you can say then that the limit of one over 4k squared take away one, really as k goes from one all the way up to infinity, is going to be, well, all we will be left with is one half. And that will be your answer. Give these questions a shot. You are looking at the Unit 2 booklet, page 13. Check your answers as you go, but you're just applying partial fractions to help find the sum of a series. Best of luck. Have fun. Woo! Bye.